Konstantin Malikov was one of the most innovative and maverick architects of, of his time in Russia and the rest of the world as well. Um, he was a very independent spirit and found himself caught up in the socialist system in which he really did not fit and insisted on his own individuality. But however, because of his great architectural genius, he was selected by the Soviet authorities to construct the first pavilion for the Russian in the uh, Paris Exposition. And with the fame that he garnered from that, he was able to come back and receive commissions to build a lot of the workers' clubs. And the fees gave him sufficient resources to be able to approach the government to request permission to build a house for himself. The house was permitted on the condition that it should be considered as a kind of laboratory experiment for the idea of a family living in the new society and he got to work building a house as effectively and quickly as he could with the minimum amount of materials being deployed to achieve it because his wealth was not endless and he had very finite resources that he had to consider. It's built, in fact, extremely cheaply and with very modest materials. The floorboards are only very simple uh, pine wood nailed down in opposing directions over a crate system of boxes nailed together in a grid that gave it sufficient lateral strength to support the width. The house is remarkable for its luminous light, uh, the great panel window that faces out over the street providing a very direct and single source of illumination to the great salon on the, on the middle floor. The ground floor was used for the living activities, bathing, eating, working, sort of small office spaces for the uh, little homework rooms for the children to work in. Uh, the second floor was for the sleeping and social floor, and then the upper floor was for work. And the upper floor is distinguished by its extraordinary studio, which has this amazing grid of diamond windows that are also a part of the lightning of the frame of the, the structure of the two interlocking cylinders uh, to use as little material as possible and to give strength and also the possibility of extraordinary luminosity in the interior of the space. And because the light flows in from all around, there's a sense of being almost weightless as you stand there in the studio. It's just a very uh, powerful and, and enchanting space to stand in. It it's, gives one sen a sense of kind of spiritual ease. There's a little balcony that's erected on the upper level of all, which is at the top of the stairs and leads to a deck that's out on the roof. And that's where Malnikov used to like to stand and draw. It's a wonderful house. And at the time that these pictures were taken, it had just been through a fairly major conservation effort. It certainly stabilized the place from further deterioration, so it was better off than it was before. Nobody knows quite what's going to happen next, so we're waiting with great anxiety to see what the next step forward is in, in the continuing saga of the Malnikov House, which has become one of the iconic structures of the modernist movement, in, not only in Russia, but in the world as well.